Marcel Jacobs tried several sports, from swimming to basketball. But in 2003, he chose athletics, dreaming of winning an Olympic gold medal in the long jump. Ten years later, at 18, his talent started showing when he broke the Italian junior indoor record with a leap of 7.75 meters. Then, at 21, he won the national long jump title. Two weeks before that, at the Italian U23 championships, he produced a wind-assisted 8.48-meter jump to set all-time national best. But persistent knee injuries prevented him from fulfilling his potential. So after missing the Rio Olympics, he decided to switch full-time to the sprints. Although it may seem that Marcel Jacobs appeared on the world stage out of nowhere, his devastating speed did not come overnight. Before 2021, he had a decade of competitive sprinting experience, gradually lowering his personal best from 11.19 to 10.03. Moreover, Jacobs came close to breaking the 10-second barrier several times, won four national titles in the 100 meters, took silver at the European Team Championships, and reached the semifinals at the World Championships in Doha. But it was not until the European Indoor Championships in 2021 that he gained international recognition. There, he appeared as a fully developed sprinter with cold confidence and an incredibly relaxed running style. He casually won each race to advance into the next round, making it look like a jog in the park. But his composure disguised volcanic energy, which exploded in the final and carried him to the line with the world season's best and the largest winning margin in the event at a European Championships. Interestingly, Jacob's coach, Paolo Camassi, is a triple jump specialist. At the 2001 World Indoor Championships, he outperformed world record holder and Olympic champion Jonathan Edwards to win the gold medal. Like Jacobs, Kamasi had to become a sprint student. He studied and consulted with many speed coaches and eventually, he was able to turn Marcel Jacobs into an elite sprinter. They train at the team's Olympic Training Center in Rome on a technology-packed track with various devices to record and analyze every single aspect of running. They also incorporated overspeed into their training program with Jacobs running behind a specially designed trailer towed by a car. The point is to get rid of air resistance, as in a book and a feather experiment. If you put the feather on the book and drop it, the book will offset the air resistance, making the feather fall at the speed of the book. The sprinter can reach a higher speed and use less energy in the absence of air resistance. But most importantly, that creates perfect conditions for developing a relaxed running style. Since any resistance causes unconscious tension, it occurs only during ground contacts in these conditions, so it's easier to learn when to push and relax. In his season opener heat, Jacobs cruised to an easy 9.95 visibly holding back before the final. Despite this, his time exceeded the Italian national record by four hundredths of a second. Unfortunately, he had to withdraw from the final due to calf cramps, which probably spared the athletics community a premature shock. A month later, he returned to test his legs at a meet in Poland, comfortably winning the race in 10.06. The following week, he collected his fourth 100-meter national title, clocking 10.01 into a headwind. At this point, everything looked superb about his running, except his habit of dipping for the finish 5 meters too early. Not only does it look awkward, but it makes him spend more time on the ground, which can become a crucial factor in a close race against top sprinters. Not surprisingly, at the Diamond League meeting in Stockholm one week later, leaning forward 10 meters before the finish line, he lost a tight race to Ronnie Baker. Then, four days later, at the Diamond League in Monaco, he took third place in a star-studded race, falling short of second place thanks to his habitual forward lean. Yet, despite this obvious technical flaw, Marcel Jacobs didn't break under pressure and produced an overall great performance. Anyway, overlooked as a serious medal contender and ranked eighth in the World Athletics' top lists, he went to Tokyo as a dark horse. Usually, the performance in the first round at the Olympics provides more info about an athlete's winning chances than the entire pre-Olympic season. 
Marcel Jacobs was no exception. Looking totally at ease on his Olympic debut, he coasted across the line with a national record of 9.94. However, he reacted to the record as if it was nothing special, thereby making it clear that it was not the highest point of his expectations. Besides, none of his competitors looked more confident and relaxed. The first two semifinals were the slowest since the 2004 Olympics in Athens, so Jacobs only needed to run under 10 seconds and place at least fourth to make the final. He got off to a good start, stayed focused during the drive phase, and didn't panic when he fell almost two meters behind Su Bingtian, who ended up winning the race with a stunning Asian record. Su roared and screamed and punched the air. His exultation indicated that the mission was complete. In contrast, Jacobs contained his joy over the new European record he had set. He was aiming for the title, and it seemed that nothing could stop him except his notorious untimely forward lean. Marcel Jacobs executed the longest winning acceleration in Olympic history, which lasted 85 meters. It was a display of pure skill through 95 meters of the race. Although, his triumph is widely considered a fluke. In fact, it is a result of great teamwork, smart training, and a childhood dream.